So today we're going to be taking a look at some of the issues with solving the ratchet rise equation. And the main two categories that we're going to be looking at is speed and convergence. On the speed side, we're only going to be going through some of the potential improvements you can get, but there's a bunch of them, so we're not going to go into detail. One thing you can try is to transform your equation by doing a coordinate transform to try to linearize your solution. Another potential benefit that we've already looked at is by adding bounds, which are stricter than the negative flash bounds. You can also try to upgrade your root finding technique, or you can try to improve your initial guess, or you can try to pick a different heuristic for handling overshooting with the Newton method. And there's a bunch more of these potential benefits, and you can read all about it if you want. The bigger issue, however, is convergence, because if you don't converge, it doesn't matter how fast you don't converge to your solution. And the main contributor that we're going to be looking at is round off error. Now, this is a killer. And you'll see that there is a very specific case where this happens. But if you're in this very specific case, then it won't let you converge your rationalized solution. And that's not good. So what are our criteria for convergence? Well, as we've discussed in the previous couple of videos, when we derive the ratchet rise equation itself, we know that we want the sum of the molar fractions, yi and xi, they should tend to 1. We also want the material balance to hold, where v is the vapor molar fraction and l is the liquid molar fraction. We also discussed that our solution approach to the flash uses the k values, so we need this to hold. And then the last thing that we uh, looked at when we were looking at the bounds was that our solution has to be within the bounds of the negative flash. And what this really means is just that all of our components, yi and xi, they have to be greater than zero. So can we formulate all of these criteria into a set of equations that will tell us either we've converged or we haven't? Let's take them one by one. Starting with the sum of the compositions have to be equal to one. We can rewrite that by having the test for ry. So r is going to be our test variable name, and y is going to denote what we're testing for, in this case, for the vapor composition. It's going to be the absolute value of 1 minus the sum over all the yi's. And it has to be less than or equal to whatever our threshold is for y. And that's going to be defined as our total threshold, epsilon t. But then we will also have machine accuracy issues for each of the components. So we have to take that and plus it times the number of components times the machine accuracy. Similarly, we can make the same equation for the liquid composition. So now this guy's done. The next thing we want to make sure is that, by definition, the vapor and liquid molar fraction have to sum up to 1. We're going to have a specific constraint for the fractions. And that's just going to be the absolute value of the vapor fraction plus the liquid fraction minus 1, which should be 0, right? And then we'll just divide it by some reference value, which will just be the absolute value of the V plus the absolute value of the L plus 1. And that has to be less than or equal to our threshold for the fractions, which is just going to be equal to our total threshold. Now we want to get a constraint for this guy, which is the material balance. And the way we're going to do that is by defining our RZ. It's going to be the maximum for all the compositions just rearranging that equation to be equal to 0. So v times yi plus l times xi minus zi. Take the absolute value of that. And then we'll just uh, divide by a reference value as well. And we want this to be less than or equal to our threshold for epsilon z, which is just the same as our total threshold. So now we have that. We also want to check our k values. And our constraint for the k values is going to be the maximum over all the compositions of yi minus xi times ki, absolute value of that, divided by yi plus absolute value of ki. And that has to be less than or equal to our threshold for the k values, which is just equal to our total threshold. So with these sets of tests, we can actually check if your solution has actually converged or not. And we're going to define something called sensitivity which is going to be either telling us that you successfully passed the test or failed. And that's just going to be the log of whatever test value we have 
divided by whatever threshold we have. And this is going to be less than zero if we have converged. So if we go through all the tests for a specific example, and any one of these sensitivities is greater than zero, you fail the test. Good luck. Try again. And with that, I'd like to show an example uh, using the Excel file that I gave out last week to show you that you actually get catastrophic roundoff error in the real world. OK, so we're in our Excel file here that we made. And on the left, we have the Ratchet Rice plot. The red dot here indicates initial value. And then on the right here, we're plotting the absolute residual value versus the iteration number. And you can see that the Newton method here is doing really well. And the bisection is kind of slowly and steadily declining here. So the first thing I wanted to do was just discuss what I'm going to what I mean by a convergence solution. So as we discussed in the previous video, if we're in this region here, the Newton method is always going to converge. So if we move our initial guess out there, then our Newton method will always converge. And I'm going to be using this now when I, and I change the composition to get a roundoff issue case to show you that even with a convergence solution, you get this uh, roundoff error issue. So what I've done here is that I've set the composition to be 1 minus 10 to the minus 9 for the light component. And I've made sure that the initial guess is convergent, meaning that I'm to the right uh, of this Libovici neo shield bound. So if we didn't have any roundoff error, we would always converge to the correct solution. However, if you look on the plot to the right here, you see that it starts converging towards the solution, but then around 10 to the minus 7, it starts jumping back and forth. This is the issue of roundoff error. And this will always occur for any mixture that you have. You will always be able to change the composition in such a way that you get catastrophic roundoff error issues. The challenge then is, are you smart enough to figure out how to fix this? Next week, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, and we're going to be launching a little bit of a contest for everybody out there on our GitHub, where we want people to go in and try to solve the Ratchet Rice problem using Python code in an already existing framework that checks for all these tests of convergence. Uh, and we'll see if anybody's able to actually solve all of our test cases. This is kind of revamping the Ratchet Rice contest from 1995 that Curtis Whitson proposed where he had a $1,000 reward for any student who could solve it. So I'll see you guys next week, and uh, good luck.